Okay, so um, for the rest of the time, um, I'm going to talk about the uh, Indian certificate management with uh, this tool or library called the uh, Indian Cert. So let's first learn this uh, Indian certificate. So Indian certificate uh, basically is a is an Indian data package. So the only difference is that the content in the content is the public key bit, uh, in PKCS8 format, and uh, it's signed by the certificate issuer, just like other uh, data packets signed by the producer. And uh, this third issuer is the producer of the certificate, or like, uh, other uh, entities. And uh, in NDN, we all know that the producer needs to sign their data packets every time they produce a new data packet. So you need to, a, a producer must have a, a, a certificate. And the uh, certificate helps others to identify you because um, that's where your public key is. And the public key is actually your identity. identity um, and also, certificate proves the ownership of an NDN namespace. Um, so a simple example that uh, if I get a certificate called the uh, UCLA uh, CSG from the UCLA uh, authority, then I have then I have the ownership of the UCLA CSG because I can issue uh, sub namespace certificates to to my devices. For example, I can issue uh, like a UCLA CSG iPhone to my phone. Uh, so that means I can manage my uh, namespace using my certificates. And uh, manually configure the certificate is error prone and uh, also uh, low efficiency. And uh, so we want an easy of use and automatic certificate man management system to help us to get the certificate and also to issue certificates to other uh, entities. So before we get there, um, maybe I can first show how can you uh, manually get a certificate sent by uh, authority. So first, uh, hope you can see. Uh, first I generate a new certificate. I gener generate a new uh, key or identity. I mean, they generate that as, at the same time. Let's call it uh, um, ICN. Okay, so this is uh, a self-signed certificate. And if, if so, for now, um, this certificate is only on your own laptop, and uh, no one else in the world can identify you because you cannot trust you if you sign on your own. And uh, so, to let this certificate signed by a like a trustworthy authority, you need to copy this. Uh, this self-signed certificate, and you either uh, send an email or you write it on the paper. You take this uh, self-signed cert self certificate to that authority and let them to sign, uh, issue a certificate for you. And uh, the content of that certificate is exactly the content of this self-signed certificate. That's your public key. And uh, to sign a certificate, so basically you can use this. Uh, in this stack cert uh, generate to uh, sign a certificate request. And this certificate request is what I get here. So with this Indian stack sign request, you can get the uh, certificate request for this identity. So let me show how to, how to sign this uh, request and get a certificate. The later one is actually a sent certificate uh, sent with my uh, default identity. So my default identity is actually uh, oh, still self self -sent. Um, I can change my default identity using the Indian set, set default and uh, put the identity 
name after afterwards, and then you can set the, a new default identity on your device. For example, here, I have, if I want to set this uh, UCLB Alice as my default identity, I just set a new default identity, identity here, and uh, then I uh, call the function again. We put the certificate request to get a here. This standard input. Yeah, and then you get a certificate sent using your uh, UCLA speed. So, so now you can see um, this certificate has an identity name I see a hello, uh, which I just created, and uh, the key locator is actually in the UCLA CS Alice. What I just uh, set the uh, set as the default identity of my laptop, and uh, that's how we manually issue a certificate signed by uh, another identity, usually your CA. So. You can see this process could be very uh, error prone and uh, take time. And uh, the end, end, the certificate issuer and uh, requester can be uh, the same ent entity. For example, here, uh, let's see, I have a smart home system and I use my Android phone as the root CA and I issue certificates for my camera, my television, and also a uh, uh, light controller, and uh, this light controller can further uh, delegate some name spaces to like those three lines there. Um, so at at this point, this uh, uh, this uh, light controller is both a certificate issuer and also a requester. And uh, for the NDN cert, so so we did, so we de developed the NDN cert. Uh, system to facilitate the process of certificate assurance and uh, also the uh, application. So an insert basically it has uh, two parts. One is the command line tools that can be installed uh, when you compile uh, the insert library and install it, or you can download it from the uh, PPA package. Uh, the uninsert command line tools, it contains the client part and also the server daemon part. And uh, for the uninsert library, we provide some uh, uh, APIs for for your application. So your, your application can invoke, invoke those APIs to get a certificate from a remote CA or to issue certificates to other uh, devices or applications. So here the NDM protocol is quite simple. Uh, basically, the certificate requester will send uh, a request saying that I want a new certificate or I want to renew my existing certificate or I want to report that, for example, my device got lost, so I want to revoke this uh, certificate. And uh, the certificate issuer the, or the CA, it will collect the available challenges. So challenges here mean, means all of band challenges. So it will collect the available challenges and uh, make a list and uh, send back the list to the requester. So the requester needs to select a challenge from the challenge list and the proof is real world identity. Or uh, like the possession of a uh, shared secret or the possession of, uh, for example, like an email address, something like that. So uh, after it selects the challenge, it uh, finished the challenge um, offline or through other means, and they, and they then send out the um, <coughs> results of the challenge 
to the issuer and issuer verify the challenge results and uh, if everything is fine, um, the, the, the issuer will notice, notify the requester that, that okay, everything is fine, you can download your certificate now and uh, you can download it and get the certificate. Um, and, we'll, and we also have the, this so-called intro node certificate management and this is because that uh, for example uh, assume that uh, I have an identity called the UCLA CSG and uh, which application should uh, control or take the responsibility of this certificate and uh, for example you don't want your Facebook app to, to modify or, or to use this uh, UCLA uh, your identity uh, certificate so we have a uh, um, in the insert server here in your local machine that can issue certificates to your local applications. So basically, uh, we want to make sure that the certificate request is really from the one, from the, the proper application instance that you really want to get a certificate that you authorize. So we have this uh, two-way challenge. One is to query the NFT and to learn from which uh, process you get this request and uh, if possible to check the application signature um, of this application instance to ensure the code has not been modified. And uh, at the same time, we use auto band challenge to ensure that, uh, for example here, uh, if the Alice controls this application instance to get a certificate from the local uh, CA, uh, the Indian server, server wants to ensure that this application is not uh, like a virus that uh, applies for the certificate by its own, but not by the uh, user Alice. So a uh, very simple out of band challenge could be, um, for example, the application shows the pin code and the, the user compar compares the pin code shown uh, from the application instance with the pin code shown from the server side. And uh, we have some uh, examples to show how to use Indian Cert from LAN tools to get yourself uh, an Indian certifi certificate. So for now, we have deployed Indian Cert server to the Indian test bed. And uh, if, if your NFT is running and you have a route from your NFT to the Indian test bed and you have the trust anchor of the test bed uh, download, download, download it to your uh, laptop you can get a certificate issued by Indian testbed uh, today. And maybe now I can show how to do this for the Indian client. Yeah, use the config file. Uh, so I just run the certificate client. And uh, here he asked me to select uh, a say to, to request the certificate. So I hear the index is zero. So I step zero and uh, he asked me the identity name. So I call myself hello ICO. And uh, now, as I uh, showed the protocol before, the server said, give me the list of challenges. And uh, here I select the demo challenge to finish the certificate application. Then he asked me to get the, to input the, the email address. So I used the, let's see, some email address. And uh, he asked me to, to finish the verification and uh, I go to the website and uh, do some uh, Okay, I got it. So it will send you a pin code. And you just copy it here and you, you're done. So to prove the correctness, you can call the Indian sec this uh, identity. You see this. First, you, you, you can see that you have a uh, and then you use the hello ICN. And uh, this hello ICN, you can see it get two certificates. One is a self assent certificate, and one is issued by Indian Cert. What I just applied from the Indian test bed is this certificate here. And uh, you can also set up your own Indian Cert server only if you have a certificate. So if you have a certificate, certificate you just let your NFT running and uh, 
uh, config the configuration file uh, for the ng insert uh, server command line too. And uh, then you can just run the ng insert ca uh, server command and uh, set up the daemon for the ng insert ca. So other applications or devices, they can use the command line tool or invoke the application APIs to get the certificate from your server. Yeah, and uh, um, I remember that someone this morning asked, uh, how can you get let your certificate available to other devices? So here we provide provide a parameter here called the uh, uh, minus R here. So if you have a repo running on your own laptop, you can use this uh, dash R to to publish your issued certificate to this repo. And uh, so when the other devices want to verify your certificate, want to verify your um, data package, they can get your certificate from this repo. This, and uh, finish the verification process. And here is the NDSERT library APIs for application. It's kind of complex to use for now. And uh, we hope we, we can improve it and make it simpler for developers to, to invoke. And here are some URLs uh, to the Indian third uh, project. And also, we have very, very well documented uh, specification and also uh, configuration samples available. So I, I just had a question if maybe either, I don't, I don't know if you or, or Alicia or Alex could explain how we get from this point to the vision of, I, you know, I have my UCLA configured laptop, I come to Northeastern, there's a hub at Northeastern, an Indian hub, and using one of the solutions that they short talked about this morning, I open my laptop, find it finds the hub through auto get some temporary certificate and can publish content in my local namespace where people can find me. So there's many steps. Alex and I actually did an exchange of text messaging. I was a little surprised by why you go through so many configuration of uh, connectivity setup. We shouldn't. There, there's yet, like so, you said, there's a, an auto config to automatically find the nearest the hub and get connected. Yes, let's all. I was just wondering if somebody could sort of walk us through that, like the vision for, and I know there are pieces that are not done yet, and some that are, so it would be really helpful, at least for me, to understand the, the distance between manual configuration and sort of the, I carry my laptop to the uh, So this is actually one of the things that we do in the full ISR project. Uh, and uh, that would be, can that specifically for kind of that environment, but uh, that code base can be then extended further uh, to simplify getting a certificate. If there is also configuration, you may just be getting some certificate uh, from wherever the location you attach to. And then you can use this certificate for in, in some, either directly in the application or application can uh, fire up the engine sort of the new engine sort of APIs on the one that we showed here uh, to give you the Derived certificate from some in some. I think the automatic the uh, Indian test bed connectivity that should be there. You shouldn't have that to use right configuration first. Uh, but the, I think the certificate of the configuration is not an issue. That that 